Do you really need to learn something new today or instead do you maybe just need to change your approach? That had absolutely nothing to do with this lesson but I felt like dropping a little spice. YouTubers, what is up? Hope you guys are doing absolutely, thank you, fantastic. So what is the big difference between the way that pros approach this instrument versus people that are just learning this instrument or students or people that are honestly just playing this as a hobby? Well, to be totally honest, from my perspective as somebody who's been teaching since I was 17 years old, it's care. Now I know that me just saying care makes you wanna go like, later, I'm gonna go find a blood to lick. Stop, I'm going to teach you how to actually practice this. I'm gonna give you something to work on so that not only do you learn something new, but you actually improve the way the things that you already play sound. That's the big difference. If we take a basic funk groove like, well, let's not call it basic. Let's say a, a, an intermediate funk groove like this. Now that groove has a lot of care in it. I care about the hi-hats. I'm not doing this. Instead, I'm playing it with care. I took that pattern, da, 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 three and a four and, and I gave it that quarter note push. I'm not going all wimpy willy on the bass drum and going one and a two and a three and a four. I'm laying into it. And if I played those snare notes completely monotone, oh my God, it would sound terrible. So every little aspect was given some care, some attention by me to make it sound good and feel good. It's not right or wrong, it's how I want it to sound. I am not only thinking about the rights, the lefts, the rhythm, the timing, I'm also thinking about how does it sound? I'm giving it care. So let's take something much more simple and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we had our basic pop beat, the groove that all of you already know, and don't turn off just because you're like, I already know this, hang in there. So if we take that basic groove, and start to care about it, it's not just the dynamics. Now, dynamics are a huge part of this, no doubt about it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I think the hi-hats are way overbearing. So I'm gonna bring the hi-hats down. But I think you could use a little something on the hat. So I'm gonna keep all the hi-hats really low, but I'm gonna accent the and of four. I've added no new notes. All I've done is give a little bit of sugar to the and of four. All right, so now I've given care to the dynamics, but I wanna give some care to the actual tone of the drum. I think that this thing is gonna work better with a full on just rim shot. Instead, of, right now I'm hitting a clean sound. But a rim shot's gonna really kind of activate my compressors and, and make it more smacky. And it has that quing, let's give that a shot. Now let's think about what this groove is doing. It's very stale purposely in that world of eighth notes. So I'm gonna give it a little forward momentum, maybe going into the downbeat of three, because I've got one and two and three and four. Maybe just an, a little 16th note on the uh of two going into the downbeat of three on the bass drum to give us some forward momentum. Oh, that's all, that's what it needs. And I think to book in that forward momentum, I'm also gonna put a little pickup note on the uh of four with a ghost note on the snare. So now let's just A, B the I don't care version where we just learned the notes on the page and gave it no attention whatsoever versus the I do care. I care about every single note and I gave every little aspect of this groove some attention.
Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the first version is stupid and it's worthless. What I'm saying is it's I'm trying to show you through your ears what it's like when I don't care. I'm playing the right part. I'm not even worried about if the hi-hat's too loud or dominating versus what it sounds like and what it feels like when you care about every aspect. Let's move this into the world of fills now. Let's take a fill that you're all probably fairly familiar with, which is four threes and a four in 16th notes. So one, two, three, 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 four. As single strokes, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Now if I do that as just singles on the snare, it's fine. But let's apply this exact same concept to that. What about instead of it being hand to hand, what if it was linear? So our threes are gonna be right left kick. It serves a purpose for sure, but I'm not caring about every aspect. Now I wanna care about the dynamics. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna work on it popping the right and ghosting the left. And ghosting the right and popping the left. And then what I would do is I would just experiment moving that around, orchestrating that around the drum set, tweaking the dynamics, the accents, the emphasis of the notes until I found like one where I go, oh, that's my jam. So in all honesty, full transparency, I'm gonna do that right now. We'll see what happens. I'm literally gonna go until I find one where I go, oh, that's my jam. That's it, that's it. I love anything where you don't hear the original pattern anymore, even though it is exactly the original pattern. That's the one. What in the H-E double hockey sticks was it? I like that. Oh. Oh, Hot dog on a stick, that's good. So that's what it's all about, caring about every single note and sticking with the things that you can already play. Maybe it's a basic paradiddle groove. Maybe it's an inverted paradiddle groove. Maybe it's that basic groove that we did in the middle of the video, but it's sticking with it until you find your version of it. I've been wanting that for you since whenever I started doing YouTube, like 2005. What is up, people? Mike Johnson once again at the Drum Lab. Today we're gonna to work on some intermediate drum fills. Even that idiot wanted you to become something unique and something that you could be proud of. Whatever I teach you on here, whatever I teach you on Mike'sLessons.com, wherever you get your information, take it, learn it, we have to do that, but then always make it your own. Put your own spice on it. So YouTubers, I hope you enjoyed this and please let me know if you enjoyed this in the comments below. Are you okay with the lessons being a little more conceptual like this? Cause I, you know, I've taught hundreds if not thousands of very specific lessons here on YouTube and I'm kind of wanting to teach you guys some more conceptual stuff if you're okay with it, but I do need to know in the comments below. If you need every lesson to be a 30 second note crossover fill with flamadiddles and pataflaflas, let me know in the comments below. I shouldn't have done that because I know I know some of you out there are like, okay, I'd like some 30 second note crossover. Please be honest in the comments below and I hope you got something out of this and most importantly, go practice. It'll flow out of us naturally. Let's get into it. One measure long, not too bad, three rudiments involved. You have two paradiddle diddles. So right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, followed by one double paradiddle.